I have the great pleasure of introducing our chaplain of the day today, and you know, I, I reflect sometimes that I'm at that point of life when I've uh, everybody looks younger to me, and so uh, uh, I've watched both our chaplain and his lovely wife grow up. Uh, they are really uh, dear friends of mine and have been for a long, long time. Uh, Pastor John Bramlett is from Ella J, and he has with him today his wife Lori, who worked for me a lifetime ago, it seems, but uh, she now works, and that's Ella. That's Ella. But uh, Lori works at the University of North Georgia at Blue Ridge Campus and does a great job there. John Bramlett um, has been in the ministry for 17 years, holds degrees from New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary in T Tennessee Temple. Um, he has been the pastor of the Carter K. Baptist Church in eastern Gilmer County, which is the community I grew up in. He's been there now for three years. Um, and um, he is a, uh, a rock-solid, dynamic young minister who has really grown that church, and I'm very proud of his work there, and I know you're going to enjoy hearing from him. So at this time, I introduce to you Pastor John Bramlett from the Carter K. Baptist Church in Ella J. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the assembly, and friends, for the invitation to be here today and for your hospitality. I must also thank my wife. She's the love of my life, my best friend, and my partner in ministry. She's a true Proverbs 31 woman. And my little girl, We prayed for her and the Lord answered our prayer. And we will be forever grateful to our God, the author of her little precious life. I'm thankful to be here and it is a great privilege for me. I believe that I stand in the midst of good people and that's a privilege. God has given me this opportunity. I was surprised when the speaker called me on Saturday to invite me for I am less than the least of all of God's people. But nonetheless, I'm here to do the bidding of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I immediately began to pray and ask God to use me to be an instrument of encouragement to each one of you here this morning. Encouragement. It has proven to be an elusive concept. I do not believe that there is one person in the sound of my voice this morning that would admit that he or she could not use some encouragement this morning. But at the same time, most of us would admit that we could do a better job of offering encouragement to others. So this morning, I'm going to share a groundbreaking truth with you. I'm going to answer for you one of life's important questions, and that is, how can you tell if someone needs encouragement? Several years ago in seminary, a professor came into class one morning with an unusual assignment. He said, the day's assignment is to answer this question, how can you tell if someone needs encouragement? And I'm going to be back at the end of class to hear your answers and your answer will dictate your grade for the day. So we set about with our Bibles and our concordances and our Greek and Hebrew dictionaries and our volumes of theology to answer this great question. And when the professor returned at the end of class, we were eager to share our answers. Oh, and we did in confidence verbose elucidations, teeming with philosophy, theology, and scripture. This was going to be an easy A. Professor, listen patiently. We took turns waxing eloquence. 
He had to be impressed. But at the end, he sat back with a smug grin and said, you're all wrong. You're all wrong. How could it be that aspiring theologians and pastors and missionaries and apologists could be wrong? Isn't encouragement part of the job? So we had to know, and he was more than happy to answer the question for us. How can you tell if someone needs encouragement? Are you ready? If they're breathing. <laughs> if they're breathing. So I'm here today to offer you a word of encouragement. That's my prayer as chaplain of the day, to be an encouragement to you. I don't know how long we'll be able to stay. It depends on our little two and a half year old. But I want you to know that I pray for you and I will leave my card. And if at any time you need to talk to me or need me to pray with you, it would be my privilege. Three simple words are my message of encouragement to you. I love you. Very simple, but very profound. It has the power not only to change your life, but the world. And I love you. It does not matter where you're from, what your education level is, or what the color of your skin is, or what your sexuality is, or how much money you make. I love you. And I say that from the bottom of my heart because God loves me and he loves you as well. Some might wonder how I can say that and not even know you. It doesn't matter if I know you, for my God knows you to the very numbers of the hair on your head. And he loves every single one of you. He proved it at the cross of Calvary. For he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And not only am I commanded to love, but I am pleased to do it, for I have been changed by the love of God. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And he has enabled me to love, and he will enable every man, woman, boy, and girl to love the way that he does if they will just ask him. In seminary, the correct answer is the answer that the professor says it is. And although I believe mine was very strong, it was not the correct answer. But we gave it our best that morning. And you know what? Our professor was gracious. And he demonstrated his grace toward us in this, that while our answer was incorrect, he gave us an A anyway. The same way that God loved me when I was unlovable. And he loves all men and women, boys and girls, even though we may be unlovable. For he demonstrates that for us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. To love God and to love others is a tall order in this hateful world that we live in. But it is ever possible through our gracious God, and he will enable us to do it. He enabled me to do it, and he will enable you to do it as well. Now I can tell you that I love you, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. What better way to encourage someone today than through three simple words to say to them, I love you, and to mean it. To share with them what God first shared with us. To simply say, I love you. It is God's word to us. It is my word to you this morning. And it should be our word before this day is over. Tell your colleague. Call your family, your parents. Say it to your child. Make it a point today to say it to that one whom you hold in contempt. You don't have to wonder now. 
You know how to tell if someone needs encouragement, if they're breathing. Know it, feel it, say it, and watch your life change and watch your world change. Let us pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, thank you for your life and your love and for the ministry of sharing your love with the world. We can all do it. We don't have to be an elected official or a pastor to simply say to someone, I love you. We can love because you first loved us and you proved it when you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us. And you proved it again by raising him to life on the third day. Father, I pray for these men and women who have volunteered to be servant leaders for our great state. And I ask that our collective prayer this morning would be the prayer of wise King Solomon so many years ago. Give us, your servants, a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. Bless our state and may your favor be evident throughout our land such that the remainder of our great union would look at us and inquire, what is the reason for the success that we see in Georgia? And we will answer. On the morning of March 30, 2017, we decided in our hearts to love God and to love others. In the one and only name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior, we pray.